ESPN FC Live on a Wednesday, I think it is. Group E reaction. Mark Donaldson, Chaka Hislop, Jules Laurent, <laughs> and Luis Miguel Echegaray. Four points, Ukraine in Group E, and they finish bottom and go home. It's as you were with Belgium drawing with Ukraine, Romania drawing with Slovakia, but Belgium will now face France because they couldn't beat Ukraine. And just in from Sam Dean at the Telegraph, Belgium right now, this is live, are being angrily whistled and booed off the pitch here by their own fans. Kevin De Bruyne is urging the players to head for the tunnel rather than going towards the supporters. Jules Laurent, sum it up for us, please. Yeah, another really bad performance from them. I mean, they've been shockingly bad in this in this group stage. Really bad, considering the talent that they have. I mean, we've talked a lot about France and, and England really underwhelming so far for different reasons and with different circumstances and qualities and flaws, all of that. But they, they are bad, this Belgium team. And I, I know they play France and this is the old rivalry, the old cousins, the neighbours, of course. Remember the 2018 semi-final in Russia? All those games through the history, even when I was growing up, I can still remember some Belgian France. And great, great narrative. There's a lot of things to talk about. But really, should they be finished second of this really easy group, the easiest by far? And why at the end are they playing for a draw, by the way, <laughs> on, the corner, on the corner flag when they know that if they don't win against Ukraine, they will be not just against France because they might see that as a, as a good game for them to play. But more importantly, on the side of the draw where you also have Germany, Spain and Portugal. Shaka Hislop chuckling in the background. Kevin De Bruyne with two late corner kicks. He's saying to his centre-back, stay where you are. Don't bother mm -hmm. coming forward. It's, it's taken short. They knew in advance if they didn't win this game and finished second that they'd be playing against France. So what's going wrong? What's the difference between a Domenico Tedesco side and a Roberto Martinez side of Belgium? Before I get going, I think there needs to be um, a parallel here. A Scotsman... Not knowing what they're doing. Oh, Jack. Uh, <laughs> really? Already? You do a Scotsman really? here? Uh, I'm, I'm Come just saying. That's, that's how we started. I, I couldn't help but chuckle. To, to that's point. brutal. <laughs> you still hang over from that <laughs> great performance well, against Hungary. <laughs> Jack, I knew he was going to do it, Mark Donaldson. <laughs> I, I thought he was going to yeah. wait at least uh, 10 minutes. But, right? Uh, I got in at 2.30 this morning. <laughs> and <laughs> you, you've, you you've not even question. asked... Sorry, Mark. Sorry, Mark. I just couldn't resist. Uh, but, 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 but to your point, um, I, 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 I don't think I've, I've seen a worse, a worse Belgium team. I don't think I've seen a, a worse Belgium performance, in, in all honesty. And, and, and Jules summed it up. We, we're talking about, and even re, irrespective of, of the draw and what half of the bracket you find yourself on, here you have Belgium, who will second best to, to Ukraine. Let, let's be honest. A Ukraine team that have finished bottom of the group. At the death, you have Kevin De Bruyne shouting angrily at his teammates to come over to just stand on the ball in the, in, in the corner flag. That just kind of, that, that summed up Belgium's, Belgium's game, Belgium's, uh, Belgium's tournament, in, in all honesty. Because while we could, we could point to that as, as something being flawed about, about this version of Belgium, I, they were not going to score. I, I cannot think of one save that the Ukrainian goalkeeper had to make in earnest mm. uh, before, before Carrasco's effort, late on. And, yeah. and that was about as good as it got. And, and that speaks volumes to, to uh, I guess, how far, how far this, team, this, this team has, has continued to fall. Um, uh, I, I'm not just... I mean, we... I, I certainly was, was critical of Roberto Martinez and in what was um, deemed the golden generation and, and Belgium topping world rankings, yet not being able to, to, to get to, to a final. Um, but, but this is, is even beyond those criticisms. I'm not sure where to start or how we end with this version of Belgium. Oh, well, LME, Jules summed it up perfectly by saying this is one of the weakest groups that Belgium found themselves in. Now, if they produce a, a somehow find a performance or a result to knock out France, then then great. But you've got the opportunity to avoid France by going out to win the game. 
He brought Trossard back in, dropped him for the second game, had Doku. Doku's in danger of, of being um, all pace and, and no end product um, so far. And, and Lukaku, I mean, three goals, none of them have counted, didn't look like scoring. And in the end, there was a chance for Ukraine near the end, which was straight at Castile. They nearly scored from a corner. And one goal for Ukraine, LME, would have knocked Belgium out. Mm. Yeah, and I, I feel sorry for Ukraine because they're actually the first side in European Championship history to win four points and fail to progress from the group stages. And, and to your point and everybody's point, this was uh, a game where there were moments where Ukraine could have taken advantage. Let's go back to that point you just said, Andy, about Lukaku and Doku. Why does Tedesco wait until the 77th minute to realize what every Belgian fan and analyst was thinking, which is Doku's not giving you anything anymore. You could have taken him off way earlier. Why does Tedesco wait until the 90th minute to take off Romelu Lukaku and bring off Openda? Why? You have to think about not just what's happening pre this game, but also in-game management. And Ukraine, there were very, very big moments where they could have taken the lead, as everybody has said. So I question... A, the identity of Belgium throughout the tournament, and B, the in-game tactics of what Tedesco does and does not do with Belgium. And now you face a French side who, okay, they haven't yet shown me exactly why they deserve to win it, but they're a much better team, and they've already proven that they're champions, and they're going to destroy you if you don't want to wake up. And Kevin De Bruyne coming off the team and, and, and not acknowledging the fan base, he knows it. He knows that this side of his is not good enough and they need to wake up. They are very lucky to go through to the round of 16 in this group, by the way, that just like Jules said, they should have really just won and gotten away with it. The, the only on thing, four the only, sorry, Shaq, yeah. Sorry, Mark. I, I was just going to say the, the only kind of silver lining, if you, if you want to call it that, uh, about Belgium, what we've seen from them so far, is that we have similar complaints for so many of the other teams in, mm -hmm. in this competition, in this competition thus far, Spain has looked good. Uh, Germany as hosts have, have, have looked look good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Italy relied on on a very late goal against against Croatia. Uh, after that, nobody else has really looked like mm -hmm. what we expected them to do coming into this tournament. So, from a Belgian perspective, as I say, and this is really looking for a silver lining uh, about anything that we've seen from them so far is that they're not alone in, in their disappointment. Jules, would you see similarities between England and Belgium in that defensively, I'm not sure they can be trusted, but going forward, Kevin De Bruyne, Jude Bellingham, Romelu Lukaku, Harry Kane, they've got goals in the team, but neither so far have been able to, to find a way to the back of the net as often as they would like. Yeah, you're right. It's a really good point. It's a really good comparison, I think, and you can look at it. And I think, again, it's a lack of structure. Structurally, those two teams are nowhere near where they should be with the talent that they have. So we, we blame the manager for that, and that's normal. The head coach, side get on one side, who has entered this one on the other side. I don't know which one is worse, to be fair. They're probably similar level of, of badness. I mean, you know, I didn't even mention Steve Clark in there, but just the disco. Oh. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding you. No, That's two I'm now. Sorry. That's I, I, two. I, I, I'm sorry. He came out of my mouth like, on his own. Um, because uh, it's a good point you were making. No, no, seriously. The lack of structure is baffling defensively, offensively, with the ball especially. It seems for both of those teams, it's like, okay, I've got the ball. What should I do? Let's go wide. And then not much happen. Let's go back centrally. Let's go wide again. Let's see if Doku can do something. Let's see if KDB can find a pass out of nothing. Lukaku up front, I mean, there's that one chance early on, right? He manages to just not even make contact with the ball. He, he brushes it on his favourite left foot. It's a great yeah, exactly. point. He's in the six-yard box. I know he's a bit, the angle is a bit tight, but still, he just has to make good contact and could be in. And instead, it's like a, he just like caresses the ball. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know what's going on with Lukaku. But yeah, you're right. It's very similar to England. They're just underfiring completely in every department of their game. Am I right in saying, Jules, that the meeting of France and Belgium is the meeting of the only two squads with 25 players instead of 26? Yeah, you're right. I mean, I've tried to explain to Gab Marcotti, who is not having <laughs> it, why 25, which is, I think, a, a, a good reason. And the, the reason behind Deschamps only picking 25, 
three goalkeepers. So that goes down to 22, which is a much easier number for drills or training because it's obviously an even number and not a odd mm -hmm. number. Whereas if you have 26, you take away three goalkeepers, you have 23, it's an odd number. And then you can still make it work. But, for, but if you want like 10 v 10 and each team will have a serve, it's better than team with two, team with one, things like that. And that's the only reason behind that for Deschamps, as simple as that. So others might see it differently. I'm not sure if he's got any impact, uh, to be fair, if you have 25 or 26. When you're not playing well like France and Belgium right now and others, whether you have 25 or 26, I'm not sure it's a, it's a big difference. Before we uh, before we discuss Slovakia against Romania, and Slovakia has been one of my favourite teams to watch. I was lucky enough to be in Frankfurt last Monday to watch them beat Belgium, and they are more than the sum of their parts. But Shaka, Belgium are nowhere near the sum of their parts. Has the golden generation said farewell to Belgian football, and this is what we're left with on the other side? They're now the golden girl generation. Boom, boom, boom. That, that. <laughs> I've, been, I've been waiting a long time for that. Um, listen, I, I, as, as, I, as I said before, um, I, I think when this Belgian team and, and, and the talent pool was was at its best and, and those players were, were, were at their peaks, um, I, the, the best thing I can remember is, is, is a, a semi-final place and, and, and a third and fourth place finish. Um, at one of the World Cups, and can, was it 2018 World Cup? Um, but that was as good as they got. And, and this is a team that sat top of the FIFA rankings for, for what, mm -hmm. what felt like eons, given the fact that, uh, again, they, they hadn't lifted major silverware. Now, now that golden generation is aging and, and, and making, making way for, for new, younger, more prodigious, prodigious talent, um, such as the likes of Doku, but still, um, Doku, which... We've seen when Manchester City comes on um, very pacey, very direct, engages defenders, but still a little bit raw in, in terms of in terms of his, his own decision making. And that's in club football, at international football, where things are a little bit slower, things are a little bit more purposeful. Um, it, it it shows up, or, or that um, that rawness, shall we call it, shows up even more, and and you show it. So I, I think there is good talent on the way, in the making, but still a long way from what it once was um, and a long way from even the, the, the realizing their own potential. So it's a, a bit of a holding pattern, disappointingly for, for many Belgian fans. Can I just say very quickly, before you yes. do the ad, just very quickly, I think we're letting the Tesco go off uh, a little too easily here because I don't think it's an excuse to, to come like this in this group when they really should have won. Yes, they're aging, but they're still playing. There's still Kevin De Bruyne there. There's still Lukaku, who is a They're still better than everybody else in the group. Yeah. Exactly. So, like, to me, it's like, yes, it's an aging golden generation, blah, 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 but this is still a very good team, and this is. is still a very good squad, and it's not good enough if you're a Belgian fan and you're watching this team, you should completely ignore about this thing that, okay, they're aging. Okay, they're aging, but they're still there. Kevin De Bruyne and all the, like, the, the, Yuri Tillemans, who had a very good season with Villa. Like, this is a very good squad still. And it, regardless of who you face, France or the top giants, like, you should have won this group easily. And that falls down to Tedesco a lot. Yes, the players share the responsibility, of course. But just like I said at the beginning, the in-game tactics, the analysis, yes, and it's correct. It's very England-ish. Like the, the, the in-game management of this Belgian team is close to pathetic. And Tedesco should hold the responsibility for that.